So it's Rob Shapiro from Technique Peak. Now we're going to look at the SC joint. It has to have the ability to elevate and depress and protract and retract. So we know it's uh, as we go into elevation and depression, so we're talking about it's going to be convex on concave. So that means that as the bone goes up, the glide's going to go down. So if you look at Frank here, you tell him to, I want to see if there's depression and elevation. So as he elevates his shoulders, I should see the clavicle drop down. But if you see on this side, it goes slowly. As he goes up, this goes down. All of a sudden, this kind of blocks. So this stops. This doesn't go into an inferior glide. So treatment-wise, what can we do? There's your typical, right? People can't, you can go either way. But if he can't go down, I can grab onto the clavicle. I can just do a glide. You know, I could, I could easily do a inferior glide. I could take it. I could also take the clavicle itself, hold that, and I can do a lateral glide, like a little bit of traction or distraction. Okay. Then he has to have the ability to protract and retract. So this one we could have his hands up in the air. And now we're going to have con, uh, convex on, concave on convex. So as he lifts up, the bone goes forward and the glide should go forward. So my fingers should go up and then come back down. All right. As I go up and back down. So if I want to do more of a glide, to, let's say to make it come forward, these are harder. I mean, you can grab onto the clavicle. You could always do a general. You could do a general distraction. You also kind of grab, which is a little bit tough to do, but you could also do a, you can pull into a P to A position. Or I could even take a little bit of the sternal part and just kind of push, give a little bit of a posterior glide, relative anterior glide. So I can go back and forth. So those are good ways to get the clavicle to start to move. Another thing to think about combining those two together we have to have the clavicle itself is here. It has to have the ability to posterior rotate and anterior rotate. So I could have him bring his shoulder towards his ear, bring his shoulder up towards his ear. At the end, I want to see, does he have that ability to posterior rotate? So see, sometimes people have that missing. They'll have subclavius will be very tight, restricted, which doesn't allow the clavicle to rotate around this axis. So we had, we went up and down, forward and back, and then we have the rotation component. And all really good techniques to kind of get this get this clavicle to move in all different directions. It's Rob Shapiro from Technique Peak.